Hello, and welcome to STEM in the Gym, an exciting way to incorporate academics with exercise. It is also a great way to reinforce science, technology, engineering, and math for kinesthetic learners. This approach is a perfect example of the mind-body connection that is beneficial for all children. My name is Cindy Jones, and I'm an elementary physical education teacher. I began developing the STEM in the Gym program after taking a children's engineering course. Within my classroom, the gym, students experience STEM concepts in a kinesthetic manner. For many students who are kinesthetic learners, this helps them make the connections between academic concepts and real world experiences. It has been a real thrill to see the students' excitement learning academics while exercising. Another valuable feature of this program is the ability to modify it to teach all types of learners, whether visual, kinesthetic, special needs, and it benefits them all. The classroom teachers have thanked me for reinforcing the standards of learning they have introduced. My goals for STEM in the gym are simple. Academic learning, exercising safely, and having a great time. Enjoy. This unit explores simple machines. Giving students hands-on experiences with the six simple machines and gears. This unit incorporates many items that are typically available in a school's gym and some specialized pieces of equipment specifically designed for exploring simple machines in the fitness arena. A teacher's guide with seven lesson plans provides the framework for this unit while this video provides you with a visual guide for demonstrating these activities. Wedge tag is a variation on the basic game of tag. The students who are it are called the wedgers. When playing wedge tag with a class of 24 students, I recommend having at least four to six wedgers. This keeps the kids constantly active and gives everyone a chance to be a wedger in a reasonable amount of time. All the other students will be moving in pairs of two. The pairs have to work as a team to move quickly away from the wedger. If the wedger touches any part of the pair with the wedge, they are frozen. When the pair freezes, the wedger separates the pair with the wedge, and the wedger then gives one of the two the wedge, and that person becomes the wedger. To allow everyone a turn after being selected as a wedger, that person is not allowed to be a wedger again until everyone has had their turn. I like to allow all the students to become the wedger before stopping the game. Be sure to emphasize the action of the wedge separating the paired students. This will help to solidify the purpose of the wedge and its importance as a simple machine. This activity can also be executed with different locomotor activities as a variation of the game. Some examples would be skipping, galloping, and other safe, creative ways to move together. The seesaw balance activity demonstrates the mechanical advantage obtained by using a lever. The students first experience the lever individually, then with a partner. Depending on the number of levers you have available, students may need to share the levers. I prefer no more than three to a group for maximum benefit. As individuals, they place the fulcrum under the lever near the middle. Then they step on the lever, making sure they first step on the side of the lever that is on the floor, and then step carefully to the other side. After they have tried balancing over the fulcrum in a couple of different spots, they can work with the partner. When working with the partner, the first student again should step on the side of the lever that is on the floor. They hold arms and the second one carefully steps on the elevated side of the lever. The students then learn to balance or seesaw by experimenting with the position of the fulcrum, which accommodates for weight differences and makes balancing possible. With many students, you can see the light bulb come on during this exploration activity. They connect the position of the fulcrum with the amount of mechanical advantage needed to achieve a state of balance. They can find the fulcrum point where students of different weights can seesaw. This activity allows the students not only to experience mechanical advantage, it gives them a chance to work as a team and problem solve on how the fulcrum and lever really work. This is a good time to interact with the students. 
giving them verbal cues to help them to relate balance and mechanical advantage to the action of the lever. The wheel and axle is a fun activity loved by all ages. The wheel and axle can be used individually or with a partner. One of the individual activities is to have the student stand on their knees and place the wheel and axle directly in front of them. Have the student place both hands securely next to the wheels on the axle and gently inch the wheels forward about one foot and then back to the starting position. This is a good core exercise for abdominal muscles as well as upper body strength. Let the student practice this several times to feel confident with the maneuverability of the wheel and axle. Besides being a good exercise, this student can determine if they are confident to do the individual wheel and axle relay. The wheel and axle relay is not about speed. This relay is an activity incorporating the wheel and axle to complete the course successfully. Emphasize that slow and steady wins the race. To help emphasize teamwork and team spirit, reward each team as winners if every team member completes the course regardless of speed or ability. This would allow the students with low muscle tone or low athletic ability to be an important contributor to the team. For example, a wheelchair student could be allowed to use their wheelchair as their wheel and axle device. Or a child with low muscle tone could be permitted to walk on their knees, allowing them to be successful. Any modifications to make students successful are encouraged. Everyone can participate in the partner wheel and axle relay. Student one, the driver, sits on the scooter and steers the wheel and axle. The second student, the worker, pushes and navigates the scooter around the cone. The combination of the driver and the worker in steering both devices are imperative to the successful completion of the course. The thrilling part of this activity is that the wheel and axle allows the driver to actually steer and feel the control function of the wheel and axle. The wheel and axle can be used for other extinction activities which are included in the STEM in the Gym guide. The screw patch is a fun way to learn how a screw works. Students may have seen or used typical screw or bolt. The screw hatch gives the student the opportunity to experience the use of a screw in a different setting, like on a space shuttle or a submarine. The screw hatch also provides a simple way for the student to learn the concept righty-tighty and lefty-loosey. They can also see the workings of the hatch as they rotate the head wheel in different directions. Before beginning the screw hatch activities, remind the students to approach the screw hatch slowly. There should be no running in the area of the screw hatch. During the activities, students either lay or sit on the scooter. In this fashion, they are at a low level approaching the screw hatch and it is easy to operate the screw hatch. Also, using the arms allows the students to use the upper body strength and hand-eye coordination to operate the screw hatch. You may want to explain to students the purpose of hatches on ships and spacecrafts, and that a simple machine, the screw, is used to ensure a tight-fitting hatch. Also, emphasize that for most screws and bolts, turning them to the right will tighten them, and turning them to the left will loosen them. Other extensions for this activity can be found in the Simple Machines Lesson Plans book. The Incline Plane activity is a great way to help the students understand the practical use of mechanical advantage. The students learn very quickly why the Incline Plane provides mechanical advantage. To introduce this activity, a team of teacher-selected students does a visual demonstration of the function of the Incline Plane. A group of three students, the lifters, has to work as a team to lift another student, the load, onto a short platform. A lightweight student should be chosen as the load and will lie in a log roll position. Close supervision by the teacher is recommended during this demonstration. The lifters need to space themselves along the student log roll at three positions. Lifter one will be responsible for the head and shoulders. Lifter two, the waist and back and lifter three is responsible for the upper leg and knees. Either the teacher or the student lifter in the middle will be responsible for saying one, two, lift. Remind the lifters to gently lay the load on the platform. If they cannot lift the student, that is okay. The attempt allows the class to observe the load and the work principle. 
After the lift or the attempted lift, the students will then roll the student up the incline plane, allowing them the opportunity to compare the difference in the work needed to lift or to roll the load to the platform. After the demonstration of the team lift and the team roll to the platform, the students will work in groups of four to execute the team roll to the platform by using the inclined plane. If time permits, have each student's experience being rolled up the inclined plane. Emphasize that the total work output is the same for the team lift as the team roll. Since work is the product of force times distance, then the amount of force can be compared to muscle strength. It takes more muscle or force all at once to lift the student up to the platform than to use less muscle or force to roll the student over a longer distance up the inclined plane to the platform. In the pulley activity, the pulley is securely connected to the wall and a rope tied to the scooter is threaded through the pulley and back to the student. This activity is a favorite because the students immediately feel the results of their work by moving forward. Students will work in teams of two in this activity. Student one is the load and will be working to successfully pull the scooter to a cone at the wall. At that point, the student walks the scooter back to student two. During this process, student two holds the extra rope to keep it from getting tangled under the scooter wheels. The students gain an understanding of how the pulley got its name as they pull hand over hand on the rope to go forward. They also experience how two simple machines work together, a pulley in conjunction with the wheel and axle. The gears are fascinating mechanisms to observe and experience. While gears are not considered one of the six simple machines, they have some of the same qualities. They are a wheel with teeth, a wheel and axle, and the teeth act as levers as they mesh. Preferably, multiple gear mechanisms should be available. Have some set to gear up and others to gear down. Allow students to observe, experience, and compare the difference between the two. To thread the gear, first tie a knot at one end of the rope. Then, Find the smallest hole in the gear you want to thread. Thread the free end of the rope through the top of the gear. Pull all the way through until the knot stops the rope. Now, attach the free end of the rope to the scooter. The mechanism is ready for use. In the gear activity, students can work in groups of two or more. One student will sit on the scooter that is attached by rope to the pulley gear. A second student will use the handle to turn the gear pulling the scooter and student toward the gear train. Be sure the students know that this activity is not a race. Proper use of the gear should be at a slow and steady pace. The goal is to learn about gears and how they can help us work. Emphasize the relative sizes of the gears. A big gear driving a smaller gear will make the smaller gear turn rapidly. Conversely, a small gear driving a large gear will make the large gear turn slowly. Tape has been added to help students visually discern the different rotation speeds of each gear. You can count the number of rotations by watching the tape. Notice that it takes two rotations of the small blue gear to one rotation of the large yellow gear. Also note the directions that the gears go. If one gear is turning clockwise, the second gear is turning in the opposite direction, counterclockwise. They can also feel which setup is easier to turn, which is the geared down version, due to the mechanical advantage of the gears. Further details of these and other activities can be found in the STEM in the Gym Simple Machines Guide. Thank you for joining STEM in the Gym.